one-fifth of the world's population are Islamic. The entire Islamic world produces only about 1% of the world's scientific papers. Well, that's a startling correlation. 20% of the world's population are Muslim, and they produce only 1% of the world's academic papers. Well, Mr. Foote, I believe you have grabbed the bull by the ears of the cow that is standing next to the bull. But wait! 20%? That's also the percentage of people, according to the World Bank, that live on under $1.25 a day. Now, I don't know how many academic papers they produce, but it's not many, is it? Now, let's say you looked at a world map. You took all the places where the Muslims lived and all the places where the poor people live. I wouldn't say it's an exact match, but, you know, there's overlap there. So let's say you're poor. You're going to live to about 35, 40. You don't have time for book learning. It takes all your time just to feed yourself. You're going to have to work real hard to raise your family. There's not much leisure time. you just got to keep going. So any philosophy that gives you simple answers, any philosophy with a rule of thumb, magic man did it, um, gets rid of all the complicated questions, gives you a lot more time for feeding yourself and doing all the work that you need to do. Of course, Christianity provides all those uh, time-saving simple answers just as well as Islam does. The common denominator here isn't whether you're uh, Christian or Muslim, it's whether you're poor and religious. And poverty really helps make you religious. Religion also teaches obedience and the acceptance of your lot in life, and that's good. We need unambitious people like that who are compliant to do all the work that needs to be done. We can't all live the Western lifestyle. Besides, we're going to need an awful lot more people like that if we don't find a replacement for oil soon. But you know what religion's like even more than poverty? War. You go and attack a religious group, or you go and attack any community, and they're going to start to line up behind their leaders, even if they didn't particularly like those leaders before. So if we want to solve the problem of radical Islam, one of the things we have to do is stop attacking people or busting up their societies just so that we can get their resources cheaply. But I have to caution you, do you really want to go to a world where we can't do that? Because when the soldiers are saying, yeah, we're out there fighting for your way of life, it's true, because your way of life, my way of life, is based on taking other people's resources for much less than they're worth. The fact is, a few guys with knives chopping off heads, or driving around trucks full of fertilizer, or even blowing up a, a, a nuke or a couple of nukes, are not going to take down Western civilization. So the question comes down to, ultimately, is a few people a year that you don't know dying in a tax? Too high a price for you to pay to put cheap gas in your truck. I mean, more people die from the trucks 